In this video, we're going to import crypto prices using the Binance API and the Data Fetcher app for Airtable. The first thing we need to do is install the Data Fetcher app from the Airtable app marketplace. Once we've done that, we'll be prompted to create a free account. Or if you already have an account, you can sign in. Then close the app and set up the output table ready to pull in the prices. So the first thing we're going to do is change the name of our primary column from name to symbol. Now we're going to include crypto symbols here or tickers rather than um, the names of the coins. So for example, we'll have BTC for Bitcoin, ETH, and BNB. Now we're going to use these with the Binance API to look up the prices for these different coins. So back in the data fetcher app, click create request. Then name the, the request fetch Binance data. Then in the URL field, enter the following URL which is made up of a base URL and the 24 hour endpoint. Now this is going to return market data. This URL you can find in the blog post that goes along with this video. And I'll put that blog post in the video description. We're now going to add a parameter called symbol. With the following value. So this value is made up of a reference to the coins table and the symbol field. And then the second half of it is USDT, which is the symbol for the Tether coin, which is gonna mean that we get prices in USD. Then click use current for output table and click it again for the output view. Finally, go down to the advanced section Go down to run on multiple records, click use current and use current again. Then finally click run. We can toggle this warning so that we don't see this warning again. The request will run and populate the response field mapping modal. Click filter all to get rid of all of the fields. And then we're going to add a field back in. So click on last price. Change the data type to currency. And in this input, enter last price. You can also add any other fields back in here. And to have a look at what those fields actually represent, we can look at the Binance API documentation. I'll also include this, a link to this in the video description. So the endpoint that we're using is the market data endpoint and it's the 24 hour ticket price change. So we can see that all these fields correspond to the ones that are returned in data fetcher. So we're including the last price, but you can also include any other ones that you feel are relevant to your crypto portfolio. Finally, click confirm. That field will be created, the last price field, and the request will run for each record in your coins table. Finally, click Save, close the app, show the hidden field. You can see that prices have been pulled in for each of our symbols. So the next thing we're going to do is use these prices combined with a new table to create a crypto portfolio tracker. So create a new table called Portfolio. Delete the default fields, change the primary field to ID with type auto number, add a linked field called coin, disable linking to multiple records, 
Now add a lookup field called price. which uses the last price field from our coins table. Now add an exchange field of type single select. And we're going to use this to track where we're keeping our coins. Add a balance field of type number. Finally, add a value USD field with type formula is equal to the price times by the balance and add currency formatting for that with the maximum precision. So we can then go in and select what coins we have in our different exchanges. So we might have some Bitcoin in Coinbase and we might have one of those. We might also have some Ethereum in Coinbase. We might have 10 of those. And finally, we might have some Binance coin in Binance, and we might have 10 of those. So after doing that, we can run our request again. And we can see that these price changes are going to be propagated through to our portfolio table. We can see the total value of all our holdings down the bottom here. Lastly, we can schedule this request so that we don't need to click run manually. We can schedule it by clicking here on the schedule section. You'll need to upgrade your data fetcher account first to do this. We can set it to repeat every hour on the hour and click save so that that takes effect.